Hello, folks. All right, I finished capturing data for the elephant trunk. Well, finished in terms of what I consider finished. I captured seven hours of data and all, but others, of course, would like to go double or even triple that. But I'm not at that stage yet. But this is what my data looks like for the HA filter. This is what it looks like for the sulfur. <laughs> not much there, is there? And this is what it looks like for oxygen. And, and obviously, when, when you're not picking up a lot of data for oxygen and, and sulfur, you're, you're going to have to work, work really hard to get something that looks halfway decent. And it took a while, but I, I managed to get this. Where did it go? Where did you go? Ah, there you are. All right. So that's what I've got. Oops, that's, I'm all screwed up here. Let's close these. We don't need these anymore. They're messing me up. So that's what I've got for the elephant trunk. And I, I think it's a definite improvement to what I captured a couple of months ago. This was my first version of the elephant trunk and on the right here. And it looks a little lifeless. It The, the colors just look drab. Um, and I had a, a cracked filter where you can see this shouldn't be here. This is screwed up. Um, and that was from the oxygen. There was actually a hole in my filter for the oxygen. But uh, this is what I've got now. I may still work the data. I put this in AstroBit if anyone if anyone wanted to see the, the, the big image, the full resolution. But uh, that's what I came up with. And what's interesting is uh, no matter who works the data for the elephant trunk, I've looked at a hundred versions of this, and it looks different every time I see it. This is just one of those nebula where I can't nail down, is there a right or wrong way to how this should really look when you're doing Hubble or, or anything else? It's, it just looks different. Some people have cyan, some people have a nice blue. Gold is usually always there. It just It's always different. Look in Astrobin, you'll see a hundred different versions of the elephant trunk. And uh, let me show you one more thing is, that's my North American Nebula. And they almost look like twins, that the colors are, are very, very close, and I guess they would be, considering I'm the one who worked the data on both of these. I'm sure if somebody else worked the data, even the same data, they would look very different. But anyway, that's what I've got, and uh, I want to show you something else. Okay, uh, stick around. Hey, I am back. I wanted to show you um, what it looks like um, with my auto focus or how it kicks in when I when I lose focus and I thought when I bought this moonlight focuser I, I thought it held the focus really well and I didn't want to take the time to automatically refocus every hour or something but you know what it it twice now I've seen it it can still lose focus throughout the night and so I'm gonna start kicking off my autofocus maybe every 30 minutes or every 45 minutes just to stay on top of focus because you know when you uh, this is my HA data from the elephant trunk one raw image and watch when I scroll through these this is from the uh, you're looking at the whole picture as I scroll through these you can't really tell what's going on but I'm losing focus it's only when you zoom in now watch what happens when I zoom in. Let's pick a couple of, uh, let's pick some stars that might, might be able to see here. How about these here? All right, Let, let's watch these right in this area. As I start with the first frame. You see how they're getting bigger? And look at these stars over here have basically disappeared, most of them. And, and from frame to frame, it's just getting worse. And I'm going to kick off the autofocus here in a minute when I saw this. Yep, there it goes. You can see my autofocuser put it right back into focus again. I went from that blurriness to, to much more pinpoint. It doesn't seem pinpoint. That's because I'm so zoomed in, but... I'm just saying now, it, the focus can sort of sneak up on you, and if you're not looking closely, you could be losing focus and, and not even know it, and it will impact the overall image. Uh, at least I assume it would, with how, how crisp and 
and detailed it will look. So from now on, I'm going to start kicking off uh, my autofocus every 45 minutes, maybe every 30 minutes. I just wanted to share that with you because, again, watch this. I'm going to zoom all the way out. And you, you just can't tell from from the outside view. So you may think you're, you're focused. You never lose focus, but you are. <laughs> just thought I'd share that. And uh, why don't I share my autofocus settings just for anyone who has an autofocus or if you want to compare yours with mine because I made a video earlier on what my settings were, but they've changed since then. And um, I'll just go through them again if anyone is, is still watching. I'll be back. Hey, I am in Sequence Generator Pro now. And when I first started using my autofocuser, I didn't think it found the best focus possible. And I found um, I, I had to change a few things. First of all, I... I tightened a few screws on the focuser itself. Not sure if that really helped because I did so many different things at one time. But I did that. And and if you have a Moonlight focuser, let me know and I'll tell you what I adjusted. Um, and uh, I went into tools. I'll show you what I changed in the Equipment Profile Manager. Uh, let's see. I went into uh, going to that. Focus. Now, I posted a, a message about the issue I was having in Cloudy Nights, and somebody told me, well, I need to have the the backlash set for my focuser. I wasn't doing that before. And uh, so I, I checked this box off, and I, and I just put in 200. Uh, they said, just go high, and it doesn't matter if you're too high. The, it, the focuser will, will know when to stop, when it it's working again so I just put in a value of 200 and and that was it for that and uh, let's see I have use autofocus check and auto adjust focus per filter check and now let's go into this box here hit set and you can see my settings on the left I have let's see autofocus every 3.5 degree change every 45 minutes on filter change before sequence starts and autofocus on resume. Although whenever sometimes I click resume, I don't see the autofocus kicking in, so I'm not exactly sure what that's doing. And I noticed uh, up here, I thought this is what I needed to set for my autofocuser, but this doesn't really do anything if you have a filter wheel. You have to go into this button here for filters. And this is what I've set up. Um, uh, so when the autofocus is kicking in, for HA, I like to use 10 seconds when it's checking the autofocus, you know, do 10 second exposures. But for the rest of these, 10 seconds is a bit too long, I think. I think I can get by with five. I have a friend who's doing five. I'm going to change these while I'm at it. Five broadband, I think I can get away with five. I'll test it. I think we're going to have another clear night tonight. And I'm not using these focus points. Uh, I just left them as zero. My autofocus is working really good now, so I don't think I need it to, to bother with those. Uh, hit OK. And I think uh, I originally had a step size of 10. And, and when you're running autofocus, you get a V curve, and my V curve was looking a little funny, and I changed my step size to 40. That's what my friend Doug was using. I rely on Doug a lot. And uh, the graph looked a lot better with that. So these are these are my settings. If you want to take a look, compare them with yours, and and that's it. Okay, uh, that's all you have to set for autofocus. I hope that helped, and I'll just save that. Okay, see you later, guys.